Um, so without further ado, we're going to continue with the session on sensors. Again, please keep adding your questions to the Slido. Um, so I'm happy to welcome Ali Masudi uh, to talk about uh, how we're measuring vibration. Great. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name is Ali Masudi. Uh, I'm from the University of Southampton, Oak to the Electronic Research Center. So in the theme of sensing systems that can be used to monitor environments. So this is a, a new kind of technology which not many people are familiar with. So my aim is to first introduce, as outline, first introduce what this distributed optical fiber sensor is, what the technology is, how it works, the classification. And then I'm going to talk about the conventional distributed acoustic sensor, the naming is unfortunate, I'll explain. And then uh, the application of them, and then the new generation, the limitation of the conventional when the new generation with the high resolution distributed acoustic sensor, some experimental results, and then results and conclusion. So um, most of people in this in this uh, here are familiar with the point sensor. So when you have a point temperature sensor, point a string gauge or point like microphone to measure one uh, the data from a single point. So if I explain that in a conventional system, so we have a interrogator, uh, we have an interrogator, and then let's say I usually give an example of a pipeline. The fiber is used to take the lights from the interrogator to a point that you want to do the measurements, and then you do the analysis, the data goes back and it gets analyzed, and then you do the measurement. So if the pipeline has a temperature distribution of this dashed line, you get a single point. Perfect if you know where you want to do the measurements, but if you want to map the whole pipeline, that's not ideal. The second concept is quasi-distributed sensor. So again, some people might be familiar with the concept of fiber bracketing sensors. So basically you have, you modify the, the properties of the pipeline at the few locations, and then you can do the measurements at those locations, temperature, again, vibration, magnetic field, so on and so forth. Uh, so similarly, Again, you need to know there's a, uh, they can do the measurement at predetermined points because you need to know where you're putting your sensors. So again, if you have this temperature distribution, you put it at few positions and then you can measure those points. But if in this case, if you have a cold spot between the two hot spots on your pipeline, then you miss that because you have a predetermined point. Then we have the concept of a fully distributed optical fiber sensor, which basically uses optical fiber to map your measurements all along the fiber with a set of spatial resolution. So if you have a one meter spatial resolution, you have 10 kilometer of sensor, optical fiber, it means that you can measure 10,000 points with a single fiber from a single point by accessing only a single end of the fiber. Uh, and then you can, you can map the whole distribution of your measurements. It can be vibration, temperature, the strain, so on and so forth. So uh, my expertise is in distributed acoustic sensor. So what you expect at the output of a distributed acoustic sensor is what we call a water hole plot or a spectrogram, which shows the vibration and the name acoustic has been established for unfortunate reasons. It is a vibration, it's a distributed vibration sensor, mm -hmm. but we will start calling it distributed acoustic sensor, DAS, which is easier to pronounce. Mm -hmm. So everyone stuck with it. So basically at the output, you expect to see the location of the vibration the length of it and the frequency and the phase of those vibrations. And you should be able to spatially resolve those vibrations all around the fiber. So again, going back to the pipeline. So if you have a leakage on the pipeline, if there's someone's walking on the pipeline, someone's digging, you should be able to use that as a, like as a, a strain, as a microphone at those points, measuring the strain that that vibration imposes on the fiber, the frequency, the amplitude, all the features. And if you do the, Fourier transform, you can do the spectrogram. So you can look at the frequency components of those vibrations as a limited distance. And of course, because it's a real time system, it's a dynamic system, if there's a moving object in a pipeline, if there's a peg going down the fiber, you should be able to have this diagonal line which shows the location of that, the speed of it, the noise that it generates, so on and so forth. Um, the principle of operation of the system is quite simple. So you have your pulse of light, which you send down the fiber, let's say you have a cross section of the optical fiber, it's, it's much smaller. So the fiber is like 250 micron in diameter. So I just zoomed in. And then we have inhomogeneities in the fiber. And when the pulse goes in the fiber, it interacts with these inhomogeneities, and then it 
light current gets reflected. And what we do is we look at the phase of the lights scattering from two sections of the fiber separated by distance L, which can be a meter, two meters, 10 meters, depending on your spatial resolution. Uh, if the phase, if, if the lights coming back from like the blue and the orange section are in phase, you get a constructive interference and then you get a high intensity light. If the fiber is stretched, then you send the next pulse and then you compare the phase coming from the blue and the orange section, you get a destructive interference and then you get no light. And anything in between, so if you have a vibration and you keep sending pulse and measuring the phase of these two sections, you can measure the vibration at this point of the fiber. The same principle, you can repeat that over and over. So it's from this point, and then you can do the next point, the next point, and then that way you can map the vibration all along the fiber. And the equation is quite simple. So as you can see, uh, this point there. Um, so the phase difference between the blue and orange section is given by delta phi, which is you have this, you can see this linear term, which is a function of L. And then you send the next pulse at different time. And then again, you measure the phase difference between the blue and red. And then if it's elongated by delta L, you get this equation. And if you subtract the phase difference from time to time, you get a, a change in the elongation of the fiber as a function of phi, basically. I'll come to that error later on. Uh, some application of this, we've done a few tests using this system. Safe knowledge is the is obvious one. Uh, we've, in this one, we, we've done a, put the fiber down, we put the geodes next to that, and then we've done the surface waves. So we excite the earth to see how the surface waves, really wave, love waves, how they travel. In, on the surface. We've done tests in Japan with the subsea cable, measuring tsunamis, measuring earthquakes, measuring uh, geophysical seismology, seismological activities. We use a fiber, like telecom fiber next to the road to measure traffic. We put the fiber on the rail to measure the deflection of the beam, the condition of the track, the condition of the ballast subsurface. You can see each one of these lines is one wheel of the axle of the train. And then last but not least, we can put it in the subsea high voltage cable to measure the, uh, the deflection, if there is an anchor drop, if there is any activities going in the cable to monitor the health of that. And I mean, there are, there are discussion last one for the wave monitoring, that's similar things that can be done. So with the test that we did with Inmuroto in Japan, when the wave comes in, the fiber was 10 meters, subsea was buried, and then we can see the waves coming and then we can monitor the speed, the location, everything about the waves in distributed format. So, in these plots, you can see again, we have distance, time, you can do it with frequency, you get all the information at those points. Uh, the issue with the conventional distributed since the acoustic sensor is that when you run on this uh, inhomogeneities, there are two issues. One is the signal is extremely weak because these inhomogeneities are very small. <laughs> Uh, so you, you are limited to the spatial resolution of plus one meter, so you can resolve a strain every meter, not the, the final resolution. The second issue is that because these inhomogeneities are randomly distributed, when you stretch the fiber, you disturb the location of them, and then you get, you get this phase error in your measurements mm -hmm. here. And that causes, uh, you cannot have a very fine uh, uh, strain measurement. To address these two issues, we start to work on a new type of fiber, which we use a femtosecond laser, we focus it in the core, and we change the properties of the fiber at the fixed location, which again, those can be fixed. We keep putting this femtosecond laser, we inscribe, we change the refractive index, and we have these kind of point reflectors at the fixed distances along the fiber. And then if you look at the principle is the same, we send the pulse of the light in, we get the reflection from these two reflectors, we measure the phase, based on that we can measure what is going on on the fiber, how much the fiber is elongated. In this case, we can see the variation is a linear function of the L. There is no error, uh, phase error factor, so it is a lot more precise in terms of the measurement. And also, because we rely on the reflector, we can have them space much closer, uh, with, with the similar pulse, uh, uh, pulse peak power. Um, so basically, this is a setup that we use to put reflectors in the core. I don't go into details, I think it's kind of boring for you. And you can see the reflectors every 10 centimeters in this case in, along the fiber. And then this is the experimental setup. Again, it starts with this part, it's basically 
responsible to generate the pulse. So we, we have a maser, we modulate it, we have SOA to have a higher extinction ratio. So we have a pulse. It goes on the fiber. These are reflectors. In this case, we put the piezoelectric actuators, which, which can stretch and compress the fiber. And then we have this detector part, which is basically the reflector light comes back in, amplifies, gets split into half, and then we mix the light again to measure the phase between any adjacent reflector. And based on that, we do the analysis. So this is the result. So when we do the sinusoidal vibration on the PZT, you can see again the location of that. Uh, actuations, the amplitude of it, the frequency of it. If you do the 2D cross-section of these, you can see the sinusoidal wave, and then the spatial resolution, and this is the FFT, uh, sorry, this is the FFT of that. And then you can see the spatial resolution, how well we can resolve those vibrations. So if you have very high resolution, I think the number that we are achieving is trying to push that down to five centimeter resolution. And strain-wise, we can do soft nano strain you can probably do this to 100 people strain or lower. So it is extremely sensitive for, for measurements, both in a normal and a high resolution task. Uh, and so in conclusion, I explained the classification of the distributed uh, different type of optical fiber sensors, show the principle of the gas system, uh, discuss some of the applications, the limitation of a conventional gas system, and then how we can have a higher resolution gas system by inscribing reflectors in the core of the fiber and having a high resolution distributed acoustic sensor. Just finally, as a plug, we have a, this system, we develop it as a, like a semi-commercial system. So if anyone wants to acquire, wants to do the collaboration, test the system, see how it works, uh, feel free to contact me. We should be able to arrange stuff. Thanks for your attention. I have to answer questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's really fascinating stuff that I only learned about last night that it even existed. Um, I think, could you perhaps, there's sort of like really obvious industrial applications and uh, infrastructure, but some from an ecological point of view and environmental health point of view, is it possible to use something like that? And this question came from Tom Mold, it's not from me. Is it possible to listen to sounds like movement of animals or? Uh, how, how sensitive a sound is it? I guess you were talking about spatial resolution, but it must be related to the size of that signal as well. Yeah, so we, at the moment we're working on, so that depends on the density of the medium. So we try to use this system, and we have used this system to, to listen to mammals, like subsea mammals. So we can listen to like whales with the optical fiber cable down the sea. Uh, if it is the environment, so it's, it's a space like this, in principle, we are working on a, on a way to wrap the fiber and augment it and make it as a microphone. And we can have many of them because you have this one you wrap and then you go next one, next one, and then you can have many of them and you should be able to have like a uh, hundred <coughs> microphones integrated in a single from single point, very sensitive as well. Yes, it is doable, but it won't be distributed anymore. It's going to be quasi distributed because you have to wrap the fiber and make it point kind of measurements. But yes, in principle, it's possible. I, I don't think they'll mind. <laughs> um, I think that was the only question that I had on Slido, but um, does anyone else in the room want to raise a question before I jump in? Thank you. Yeah, maybe it's the same question, but I'm negative. Uh, is there any reason why you you have to, spread, you know, to lay out the optical fiber straight line, or you can create a grid. Uh, so the question is that can we lay the fiber? Make a grid of optical fibers and just do this as well. Yeah, so I'm just asking a question for the audience. So the question is that can we put the fiber in different directions? Yes, you can lay it in any direction, you can read, because this is a 1D vibration measurement. So if you want to do 2D or 3D, you can put it in a, like a, in, in, a, in a grid pattern and you can have it 3D to have the whole map distribution of, of yes, that's possible. The fiber is like 250 microns, so it's pretty flexible. You can uh, <laughs> fall back to the I just wondered, um, you know, you've got your optical fiber and you've got your yeah. Uh, we try to try to uh, keep the raw data so that anyone can come and later do their own analysis later on. But as you mentioned, it's, it generates huge amount of data, like a terabyte per day. So it's yeah. So, sometimes you have to get rid of data, but yeah. Thank you.
I think we'll move on, but thank you very much. Uh,